it's going. Full house thing? We just needed it. Oh. Actually, you know what? I think I'll do that this week. The changing landscape of the housing market in Las Vegas requires a real estate professional that understands how to get your offer accepted, willing to go above and beyond for service and accountability. Hi, my name is Dan French, and I'm a California native that transitioned to Las Vegas 19 years ago. I've been in the real estate and financing industry for over 13 years. Most real estate agents struggle with answering their phone, returning phone calls, and overall structure running a solid real estate business. Many of my competitors do not have the knowledge of how to write solid offers to legitimately have your offer looked at, and they work with a commission-first mentality. I will roll up my sleeves and work hard to find the right home for you regardless of the time it takes. Please call me directly, 702-557-6176, to start the process of finding the right home for you. I'm available seven days a week for all your real estate needs. gentlemen please welcome what's going on everybody this is dan french this is the french workbench podcast we're back on a saturday finally Fine. had a few uh <laughs> shows off the old roni going around oh, man man you know what i'm saying <laughs> this is the most real behind the scenes information regarding financing real estate money talk entrepreneurs going on here in las vegas streaming live i'm your host dan french and i have a full studio of my co-hosts, and I'm going to go ahead and introduce everybody out there. This is uh, your first time tuning in. This is financing and real estate predominantly. We are going to talk about cryptocurrency, but uh, we have a lot of good information. So let's go over and introduce Mr. Rick Rains. Rick, what's up, buddy? How are you? Good morning, Las Vegas. Everything is great. Uh, I guess this last week, uh, my office has been fighting the plague. Uh, I've had probably half of the office, man, fighting it, but we're, man. it's all good. Everybody's... Uh, Dude, the Roni's making going around, man. <laughs> what Round have you been up two. to, Rick? I mean, besides that, you've been working. Right now is the the, the biggest time or the most... I would say uh, busiest time for you this year, right? Yeah, in a way, it's the most busiest time. Uh, my degree is actually in accounting, so... Uh, besides real estate, we have to get out all the owners' 1099s and make sure every all the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted. Got to keep the IRS off of everybody's back. Absolutely. So that's what I've been pretty so much your, involved with. Your major was what accounting? My major is accounting. Got and then your minor is kicking ass. Yeah, very, very, very much so. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. We also Rick got uh, Rains. As you guys know who that is, that's uh, Mr. Brett Jenny over here. He's uh, the one and only Mr. Brett Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Brett? Is, is, is that Matt good or bad? Man, they broke uh, the mold. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's They're good and bad. Back. No, it's, yeah. it's all good. No, man, I, uh, I'm just getting ready for the Packers for a victory tonight, man. The Packers. Packers. The Niners. You're good. Wow. 49ers. Uh, so we're going to beat Packers. you with our born and raised Cali quarterback, ugly one, who you had a chance to draft and passed. <laughs> oh on, wow! So. Put your panties up, Aaron. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we already got one Super Bowl, so we'll take another. Well, I guess. I mean, I think uh, you have to look over here at Mr. <laughs> Joe Dragon. Is Joe? Do you have something to say about that, Joe? Boo! Yeah, you're gonna be you. bleeding red today hey, for sure. You're zero three in the postseason <laughs> against us, <laughs> right? But well, two years ago, remember that? What was that? When was your last With Super Jimmy? Bowl? Uh, well, Joe Montana? Appearances? Does anybody even Steve know who he is? Sir, He's younger than Steve 30? Dion, Steve, and we have five. Oh. We have four. I don't think you guys have it. Yeah, I, I think Rob yeah, gets intimidated. You, you did, but you had, when was the last one? Like 30 years ago? Oh, I'm sorry. 95. Yeah. Relevant. Got to stay relevant. years ago. It's like 28 years ago. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. But, hey, we're <laughs> taking it out. <laughs> we're doing it. Like, hey, so I also want to go ahead and bring over Anyways, good uh, times. <laughs> Mr. Mrs. Corinne. Mrs. 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 Corinne. Mrs. Corinne. 
Come on, uh, the missus. <laughs> Nothing missing about her. No, she's definitely the missus. I'm missing. <laughs> she's got I something. Missing. She's got something to say about the 49ers, right, Corinne? I, I am wearing my 49 red, my white boots because you were born and raised Corinne Bay Area, Juice, though, right? New Jersey. Yeah. yeah, I was raised in the Bay Area when Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, yeah. Dwight Clark. I tell you what, man. streets were empty when the 49ers hey, were man. Playing. But I get Candle sick of hearing that, that whole. I found Dwight Clark in the end zone. Dude, Dwight sequence. Clark, remember hey, that? Hey, listen. I got the, oh, I should have brought the I just catch. Kinda, it gets old, right? <laughs> no, I don't know if it gets old. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get old. It never gets old. It gets old because you haven't done anything since. But I don't know, next to the choir. Hey, there's, we're, this is 2000. We're, in, we're going to take you down, get a bowl. Yeah. And um, I hope it's a good game. It's just, you know, man, all roads cold, lead man. through Lambeau Field, and good luck to you. Hey, we've been there before, and it hasn't. It did, done shit. So different game oh, when you're sorry, playing in Green Bay in January. Hey, we've been there before. <laughs> it's a cold. It is a little cold. So let's talk a little bit about what we're gonna discuss today because this is a financing real estate, but we're also gonna uh, kind of branch off. So I uh, want to talk about you know scarcity homes, where we're going again, a little bit more uh, depth on where we're had, heading in 2022. I'm gonna talk to Corinne about business, women business owners, entrepreneurs, and social media and online presence. And uh, she has a little bit. This is going to be part two, right, Corinne? Part two, personal branding. Uh, missing my girl, Shannon, but uh, she's here with me in spirit. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk to Rick Rains here. over here about property management. You got a lot of good information about property management, right? Yeah, I've got some stuff to talk about today. Okay. A and and, and good stuff. Rick's also a realtor, too. I mean, a lot of people in this room are realtors, right, guys? So Rick's got some insight, too. So when he brings up this data, he also has some things going on. But uh, we talked to Brett primarily about cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and also about real, real estate, estate as well, yeah. and information and also what you're going through because you're really active, just like Corinne, but you're really active in the field. So Yeah, very much so. Seven days a week, man. And then we're also going to talk to uh, Mr. Joe Dragon about real estate law and uh, maybe yep. some stories he's been dealing with. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the starting topic here. And the big elephant in the room is scarcity of homes. So you look at properties out there. We looked at, I was looking at some data back in uh, two, in July of 2021. We had almost 5,000 homes, I believe, as, as a whole on the When market. was this? Back in Ju July. July of last year. But this is as the whole. 2021, last yeah, summer. Last summer. As a whole, though, right? So now we're sitting at What's 20, today? 23, 2,500? 26. 20, 2,903 is what oh. I got from 20, this morning. Okay. So, so half. So half, right? And so that's going to be a problem going into it. I think everybody wants to talk about that. So for starters, to put things in, in relations of things, the 5,000 that we had in July, what percentage level was that below what we should have to begin with? So I mean, 5,000 like, is 10,000, right? It's, it would be healthy. July, so so it, was, it, was what, it was what? A month and a half? What, a month? July 21? July 21 at 5,000. That was like what? Not even a month or barely a month? Yeah. So, and so so that by by normal standards is really off. Let, so, let so alone what half I want to say now. about this is we're entering the third year of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this twenty ten, you know, this it's on stable ground. Like we're not going to say that the twenty twenty two housing market's not on stable ground. What's interesting is we were up fifteen percent or fifteen year levels in twenty twenty one compared to the last fifteen years. So we are the highest in fifteen years. On 2021, as far as for, for sales, appreciation, no, no, or, as far as uh, home sales, home sales. Yeah. so home appreciation, Exist, existing home, existing sales. home sales, right? Yeah, so that's important, and they're saying that mortgage rates are going to be roughly 3.5 percent at the end of 2022. Mm -hmm. I feel we're already there. I've seen it hit 3.6. What's it at right now? So it's right below 3.5. If you go on Freddie, so Mac, basically that's around still the same. Pretty good, yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Overall, if you look at the history of mortgages and interest rates, yeah. that's cheap. Yeah, 1990, that's still you're cheap. like 8 point something. Yeah. yeah. Or ask anybody who bought a house during the Carter administration in the late 70s where they're paying 14 Yeah, 15, but the 16%. problem with that is that's not how people think. People always think well, I know, but I'm just what they yeah, missed of course. out on. So that's and that's a whole different generation, down. so they don't even know. But I'm just saying, in relative things, if you look at oh, the yeah, history yeah. of it. Yeah, we'll get over you it. Know? So, and it's weird about, so you talk about the home sales that much, which is so core logic is a leading statistic uh, across the entire country. They've been keeping track of, they keep track of a lot of different statistics in a lot of different areas, but one of them primarily being the housing industry. And they actually predicted wrong. So for the first, they're wildly accurate with what was their, whatever they've what done the for the past 40 years. They predicted that in 2020 with a pandemic that basically home appreciation was actually going to go down. 
Not yeah. only did it not go down, it went up almost 30%. Insanely. So not know. only were they wrong, mm -hmm. and they're never wrong. They were really wrong. Yeah, but was it because of the wrinkle of the pandemic? And they didn't it's know just kind of goes to show of what we've talked about in the past, which is when you talk about some world of effect or world event that's happening, all bets are off. Yeah. I, and, and that's a prime example of that so right there. We've been on the show for a year now. We started out last year when... That, that big spike was going on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the, I mean, the explanation I think has always been the same. Mm -hmm. You had this scare that happened in the beginning of 20. Yeah. People pull down materials, pull down whatever. It actually caused a boom. I don't know why people still talk about you know, the recession of 20. What recession was in 2020? Like we yeah. just moved up. Yeah. Supply went down. Recession for what? Two weeks? Three weeks? And, uh, and when, then when, when was it? That's what yeah, I want to know. I know. Well, I know. And so it took build. Uh, now I'm up in Sky Canyon and obviously mm -hmm. um, just looking around. Yeah. They're, they've got basically every lot is under construction. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've so, been to builders. Yeah, I spent this whole week running around Las Vegas looking at builder homes. My buyer just wants multi gen. I have a multi gen buyer. Yeah, yeah. Those properties are amazing. There's wait lists. There's reservations on this. I mean, like this is. Are they over fifty five? No, no, okay. dude. They're they're because there's they're one not. heritage in Summerlin. Yeah, yeah. no. That's you and your fifty five plus communities, you don't even qualify for those. <laughs> The buyers do. They're very That's well true. qualified. No. They're the, usually cash, no, too. Man, and I, they know I, what they want. I think I know every, <laughs> every multi-gen community now in Las Vegas. I've become like an yeah. yeah. expert on this stuff, where they are and, and what it takes. Mm -hmm. it, you know, lot premiums. Yeah, PS that's lot that, that, that's the thing. You're not Damn. gonna you're not gonna get away with no lot premiums anymore. I just, I, I mean, even yeah. that one in Heritage was between ten thousand and five hundred. Oh, that's 000. a that's a steal. I, I know one hundred seventy thousand one builder. You crazy. So so for us to be in a recession, as you talked about, <laughs> right? You yeah, would have well, to have at least two quarters of GDP loss, right, or more than six months. So that's the technical definition. Technical, yeah, yeah, right. So I think when you look at that side of it, um, I think people feel that there's a difference, right, in the market. They feel a difference in uh, just that part where it was almost like a reset or maybe just a slowdown. But I don't feel obviously it's because of the, the pandemic. And we know that. So it yeah. was it was technically, I guess, a recession because everything was yeah, shut down, but it was artificial. But the more, the more economic, I think, appropriate definition is just it's psychology of the people, right? Correct. Recessions occur because people are afraid to spend because they don't think they're going to make a lot of money. And that, that I don't think ever happened because of all the stimulus that went into play and then the switch to mobile. And I think that's what caused the uh, slow in production. Now, wait list, uh, you're t I know there's still, you still have a crazy wait list, but I think they wanted to break down, break ground on a lot of these uh, neighborhoods sooner. And now the point is I'm actually seeing them break ground. It seems like they're actually have a lot more, um, Oh, it's insane. Uh, yeah. Especially in the Northwest, you have all that room to go, man. And they're just going. They're going I know. Into yeah. the, I mean, there's I a, a and a 215 yesterday. You can basically take, what, Kyle Canyon Road, the back way, and it's right there. It's it's literally right outside where the city's being built now to take yeah. Kyle Canyon Road they're up to Mount Charleston. Because there's a, crazy. There's an Indian reservation right there. Yeah. So I don't know what they're going to do about that, but they'll figure it out. Oh. I mean, there's still like. <laughs> Remember when Far Hills, Far Hills exit was far? Now yeah, that was like six years ago. Yeah. No. no, I, re no. I remember so, when they were well, completing that far. bridge that yeah. goes over the 215 that they had just completed the bridge. <clears throat> yeah, you couldn't yeah. even. When I moved that 215, yeah. wasn't connected. Crazy. It wasn't even there. Yeah. Right? So look, we're going to talk about the 2022 and where we're headed, right? So we talk a little bit about it on other shows, but I want to talk a little bit more. So demographics plays a part in all this. Okay, so you go back to 1981 up to 2018, you had people that were uh, first-time home buyers. Mm -hmm. Average age for first-time home buyers was 28 to 32. Mm -hmm. Now you're looking at the average uh, buyer that's a first-time home buyer in today's world is 33 years old. A lot of millennials, though, are also pushing to help buy homes because we, we talked about how people were migrating and, and working from home. 23% of people still are working from home or a family member in a household mm -hmm. is working from home. So you look at that part of it. And then you also look at, well, millennials are actually moving back home. And the reason they're doing that is because they want to support the housing prices going up to help with their parents buying a house. Actually, now. statistically, now more than ever, millennials are getting off the parents couch and buying homes. They are, but a lot of them are moving back home because of the prices going up and helping their parents buy homes. We talked well, about yeah, up and until, okay. So, so you're right up until right. Yeah. And but, these new builders are accommodating our new lifestyle right now, and yeah. I they don't I don't see it changing anytime soon. Which yeah. is basically what we brought up over the past couple of weeks that families are coming together. Mm -hmm. If you want to call it the children coming back in 
to help purchase the or the so older so elder the family does it together yeah, hence, the same thing. He, 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 hence the next gen suites that builders have been putting up for the last yeah. couple years i, I want to bring up a like point they know. about that so so you look at you look at families in general like if you come out of out of the country right let's say you're <clears throat> you migrate from another country we know that a lot of ship. families pull <laughs> you know pull together right pull together and they try to buy houses or work together to do that and I feel like Americans are like, you know what, I'm going to do it on my own. And maybe you had that opportunity. And I'm not saying you don't now, but maybe it's starting to, to gel a little bit more with people that saying, hey, we all need to work together, like you said, because those families make it. You know, mm -hmm. think about it. They do. You come over from another country and let's say you're making a lot less money, a lot less things at your fingertips. But then it's like, hey, you know what, we're all going to pull in and buy a house. Right, like as a family, as that's a unit. Common. We're just spoiled. Yeah, pretty common. Yeah. We're just spoiled growing up here, man. Well, that's the hard, I mean, man. Do you oh think my god! A weekend with you know parents. Yeah. Like, oh. I have to <laughs> live with other people to own a house. Poor me. I think, well, that's, <laughs> a, I think that's an interesting perspective I, that I'd never thought of. Is that the American uh, way of thinking is do it on your own, make your own right. success, yeah. so on and mm -hmm. so forth. Right. And uh, the millennials are are waking up and finding out that uh, in today's society, it's not. It's not that easy. It never no, was that yeah. easy, but it's yeah. even more difficult now, yeah. especially with the rise in prices. And so they're having to change their mindset. Yeah, I think it's all great to hate on things right. until it becomes you and you realize, oh man. Well, look, you got, we talk a lot <laughs> about like inflation. We talk about rising rates. <laughs> we talk about rising home uh, prices, right? First time home buyers are probably going into a situation where it's the hardest, one of the hardest times to go buy a home. Absolutely. If you're, if you're going and saying, hey, I want to do this on my own or start up. Yeah. So I get a lot of people that need gift funds. A lot of people need mm -hmm. support from family. A lot yeah. of people need somebody else on the application. Uh, and so I think you're starting to see people adjust or adapt, but it's maybe not, you know, you go back two years and I was like, I would be thinking, yeah. is, this, yeah. is this really where we're going to be at, you know, mm -hmm. in this short window of time, two years, you know, what do you think? I mean, do you think? I, I agree. I mean, listen, if you go along normal course of things, you would never think that, but that just goes to show anything can happen in the world. And if it does, everything and everyone makes adjustments. It's the same thing with technology right. and working from home. We we what sped up 10 years of technology of being able to work from home in like six months yeah so, so number no, number one we're capable of adapting well, to things very quickly if we need to if the whole system can shift as one mm -hmm. the problem is trying to get the whole shift the whole system to shift as one well so, and to dan's know, point like well i bought my house 19 i think it was in 2019 yeah Mm -hmm. early so it was i think it went for 320 and now they're saying it's around 500 absolutely and i yeah, guarantee it is that's three years and if i would have spent 500 then i, I was expecting like i'll, I'll list your house I'm for you like man i'll give you a good deal i'm not so, like, where am i gonna sleep your so, house so to he's a <laughs> but I'll get paid as a real hold on, hold on. Rick's, rick's saying fans. something hold on, hold on hold on hold on so to piggyback on what what dan brought up <clears> in an actual experience and i think that this is probably happening more than uh i realize because i'm in property management but we got a call uh, and I called, I got a hold of Dan on it from a lady who owns her own business. Mm. She wanted to put down $60,000 and she was trying to stay within her budget and she wanted a three bedroom house. Well, a couple of years ago, it was a reality. What was but her she, price point? She didn't have a price oh, okay. point. She was trying to figure out how much she could <clears throat> gotcha. actually buy. Gotcha. And when she found out how much she could buy, she couldn't do it. And so now she's having to raise her monthly rate in order to even get close to being able to try and find a yeah. three bedroom property. And I think a lot of people are finding that out. And that's why they're then changing to the family dynamic yeah. or, or yeah. so on and Dude, so forth. Dude, I showed a house yesterday in Summerlin. It was built in 2014. And it was like 3,400 square feet, whatever. It had a nice backyard. But it was bought brand new from Lennar in 2014 in Summerlin for 650. It's on the market for 1.4. Yeah. 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 You're seeing that a lot. <laughs> right. Do you look at some of the history? 650, 1.4. Right. You're seeing that a lot, though. How many times? I've seen it all the time. Homes, right? I mean, eight years. Right. Jeez. Yeah. I want to bring something up. So if we look at this graph here or just this chart or the, the, the map here of, of Las Vegas, this is multifamily development with major residential developments going on here in the green yeah in the green and also this in northwest see yeah see all yeah. The, this is yeah. what's going on in las vegas yeah. right now you got 21.9 billion in project costs in the development pipeline in southern nevada so that means that all these there's a lot of development going on for people to 
either rent, like you said, or live here or buy here. This mm-hmm. looks like it's a lot of activity for maybe apartment buildings, condos, maybe something like that. You know what like I'm that. surprised yeah. when, is down here in the southwest. You ever yeah. look at the aerial map of Las Vegas? Yeah. It's down here in the southwest that seems completely open. Why aren't they having a bunch of it going on there? I live in the southwest, and there's a ton I know, of development. I know, but if you yeah. still look at it, that's yeah. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's a lot of they aerial, from an aerial map. view. They yeah, need to update that map. Oh, I got, I got you. This is multifamily. Oh, multifamily. Why you don't see any in Summerlin? Right. right. Well, or Southwest. But yeah. but that tells you that that Vegas is really gearing up to uh, to accommodate mm-hmm. people to come here and live. And yeah. if you got all these projects, this is not like people always talk about like four unit buildings. We're talking about multifamily developments. Uh, we're talking about major. Seem like with the with the one like the four units plus like the four. No, you're right you know, because all of these areas where there's not right. are all one hundred percent residential. Right. These you're starting to get inner more towards the inner part of the city, right. which is where it's and notoriously known for multifamily, right. I mean, multifamilies already. So right. that makes so complete sense where they have it going. Here's, here's another issue. This is a social, huh. social issue that you may or may not be thinking about. As the builders and investors and people with bank, all right, are moving this way, what eventually is going to happen, at least in my opinion, is it's going to make a, a bigger divide between those that have what's considered those that have and those that have not. Mm-hmm. What they're doing is they're basically uh, pushing the rental agenda for the lower income, and whether or not that's a good thing, uh, it, it just it does make more uh, diversity between again those that can afford to buy and those that cannot. Yeah, I think too. Like you look at the first time home buyer programs and all these things that's going on. Vegas is really trying to entrench themselves with uh, setting up certain. We talked about this on other shows where you help with low family, uh, low income families to try to buy. But it's it's hard because I feel like a lot of people contact me and they want to know about the information. And there's a lot of data, a lot of information out there. By the time that they get to the point of going and getting started, they're already overwhelmed because they really don't know all the details, all the nuts and bolts mm-hmm. about getting into some programs. They don't know like the that. practicality, no. the way it actually happens. Actually what, happens, yeah. Actually happens. And I think yeah. that's got to that that disconnect maybe has to get a little bit better, you know, because they they seek me and it's like, well, I'm only going to know what I know based upon because I don't. We all don't do down payment assistance by staple. Like we do it. Right. I do it as a business, but we don't do it like saying, hey, this is, you know, we're entrenched into that type of market or that type, especially mm-hmm. if they're setting up some zoning or something for those homes to be built. Right. Right. So I think, you know, well, for me. Yeah. And on that point, I think that this city in particular needs to really uh, find, find ways to make sure you can get low income housing because what, or hospitality. Right. That's a big part of the economic healthy and like. You know, you make more money as a as a casino worker here than you would at other resorts, but still, you need low income people to handle just the basic labor of everything. They yeah. have no place to live. <clears throat> Where is that going to come from? So it's over the health of the city as a whole, and that's something that needs to be looked at. Uh, I also think that, um, I mean, not only the Southwest, but over the hill in Pahrump, Um I think if over what, the hump. What did you Pahrump. say? Forty thousand people uh, a year are moving into Vegas now. 50,000. 50,000. Well, 50,000 last year, and this year is supposed to be 53 or 54. A month? A year. year. Oh, okay. I was like, that seems really... Jesus, dude. (laughs) Shanghai is going to be like a small town to us in three years. (laughs) 50,000 a month. Dude, that's... So that's six hundred thousand a year. I, in twenty <laughs> years, you're looking close to four million if it keeps that rate. Yeah, they said Which is double. Well, twenty twenty five, they said Clark County will be at three million mm-hmm. by twenty twenty five. That the pace it's going now. Mm-hmm. The other thing we talk about is we know that tourism's back. We oh, were right. at you know three million average a month. Yeah, I think we're upwards of thirty five or I'm sorry three point five million right in December. I think it was close. So it shows to me that we're pretty much. I'm not going to say. You know, we can't say this because we got to see more data, but we're back on track, right? We're we're back on track well, to pre-COVID. What so we say, I right? can, better. I, I can kind of go over statistics a little I bit. I can say by just driving the freeway that we're back. Right? Yeah. Well, I think to Omicron and all these the variants and things, people are just over it because oh, they're look, so done. Yeah. they're so done. Like it's just I'm not saying it's not out there because look, we all look. I've got a scare, right? <laughs> so, you did, yeah. yeah. Look, I was so, I was at the Knights game Thursday. Yeah. Oh, this so poor man, the hardest working man at the stadium was this man going up and down with the, the stairs mask with on, the yeah. no mask, mask up, mask up. Yeah, nobody, I saw that. Nobody I saw was that. doing it. Nobody was well, doing it. Well, I mean, so <clears throat> in February of 2020, there were 292,000 hospitality jobs. And then we ended up bottoming out to 127,000. 
out of that 292, but we're back to 220. Open jobs or back to jobs, jobs yeah. filled. Jobs so, filled. So we were at 292 before the pandemic. We went all the way down to 127. Now out of the 292, we're back to 220. Well, I think that's Dang. easily explained. You were making more money with unemployment. Correct. But then you would have gone. To what's work also in opened up are like Amazon warehouses and stuff like that, and you're having a huge shift of people that are starting to migrate towards those kind of jobs as well now, which yeah. pay which pay just which, as well, which is better. good. And they, my yeah. point is, they need to keep. Absolutely. I am the ball. Keep it. How are we going to make low housing income? Yeah. We're going to take all of California's workforce. Dude, if you've been in Don't traffic, we're back. Don't transform into LA. Well, listen. <laughs> and, so and, uh, let's go back to what we're saying. 2022, millennials are going to be continuing to be a strong driving force into buying, right? Regardless if they're living with their yeah. parents or doing it on their own. Now, yep. one of the things to realize about millennials is that they're looking at more uh, small town. They're more reluctant to go into and to buy a house in a small town versus being in the suburban or city area. Right. So it's here in Vegas, it's completely different. I mean, it's just like a different world because you, I, I feel it's like an outlier because we don't have the same, we can't keep the same data and say, look, this is what people do here because I feel they're moving here for that entertainment life and for having all these amenities. You know, everybody mm-hmm. always says, well, you go, you know, got the Raiders, you got all these yeah. sports teams. There's so many things to do here that they're the attraction is a little different versus going to, say, a small town. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people that move to Vegas, they're, they're not really worried about working from home or, 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 you know, going. So I don't know if Vegas is really something where we can compare and say millennials we're, are going to still be you, a, the driving. We're, we're kind of exception to a lot of things. It, yeah, it, yeah. We're, we're a hard city to pin down. To, to pin down. Right. I mean, even if you look at like statistically, the national statistically average days for a home on the market is 54 in Vegas. We're at nine. Yeah, I mean yeah, that's the, that's the other that's thing been about for a while. Is that we don't have we don't have the same suburbia urban that is everywhere else You're in the right. country because we're in a we're in a freaking You bowl. have the valley and then we're, nothing. we're in the valley and if you compare yeah. the way Vegas is set up to say Phoenix, I mean Phoenix is really spread out yeah. and and we're very condensed. Yeah. You're either in the valley or you're not. Yeah, it's you're one not. of the two. It's, it's, it's real it. simple. But if we absorb to 3 million people, I mean we're going to So be, think about once like think Phoenix. about what happens when this because valley eventually gets go? completely filled. We're just That's what keep, I'm saying. We're They're just going to keep going up I would the, say I'm dead. I valley. don't care. It, yeah. It's going to happen dead. sooner than you think, man. But if it keeps that rate, I mean eventually Pahrump and Vegas will of course one. Yeah. Cuz that's like what Phoenix It'll just is. be right. so it'll be like a you Go over the hill, there's the next one, you go It'll over be like the hill. a Scottsdale. It's, it's, it'll be like LA. Yeah. Well, right. I mean that LA, is, LA, LA is just absolutely. a bunch of hills and then There's <laughs> only things. one bar between here and well, They so, need to so make so more. Let's yeah. talk about this then. So, <laughs> we know that 2022 is going to continue to be scarcity, right? So, let's talk about this. Uh building up versus mm-hmm. out. Do you think Vegas cuz the way it's zoned, Why? we don't really build up. Well, a lot of people Look like look at downtown, right? They're building mm-hmm. up. They got condos and condo mm-hmm. hotels, things like that. So, would you want to? Would you think Vegas would start to build up because of the volume of people that are coming I don't, here? I don't. I don't, I don't think. Yes. I, I hope no. not. You do. Yes. Well, well here's man. the reason. First of all, it has to do with the life expectancy or the way cities grow. So you start out in the center, and you continue to move out. And as mm-hmm. you move out, the 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 affluent are always buying on the edges. And it keeps going out and it keeps going out until it gets to a point where the outside affluent who is working in the middle, that's going to be your CEOs and the head of the casinos, have too far of a drive to make. So it's inconvenient for them. So what do they end up doing? They end up buying and building up, just like we're seeing in the center of the city, and the less affluent then move to the outside and that cycle continues. Yeah, Yeah, but... I'd say I, I think I disagree because one, the cities that go up in Manhattan, it's on an island, has nowhere else to go, right? So getting in, but two, I mean, we're already in a new technological world, right? And as the option, that's just going to keep getting better. So you don't need necessarily go into work every day, and even CEOs, people are going to get much more reliant on everything being done online. In my opinion, man, it could be wrong. Well, think not, about <laughs> it like this. But think about it if you you have a. a a property or a building, right? That's got units, multiple units, right? And you live on top and then you go down to the bait, like to the floor and you work on the floor. Like your job is like least, like we see that over where Green Valley Ranch is at, where you have buildings or you have offices that are on, you know, the floor level or they're on some separate level where you can literally live above the office and then just come down to work. So I'm not saying that that's going to be, but that could be something it's about convenience. And I think people, 
hey, you know what? If I can get that opportunity in the future, maybe that's something people look to do as well. There, there are other people that think just the opposite. Uh, my dad mm-hmm. was the opposite. He, he was a, a trucker. He could have trucked anywhere, and he chose to be uh, 40 miles away from home because he didn't want to work where he lived. He didn't want to be reminded every day yeah. of the job, you know, going to the grocery store, and then you come back into that same freaking building, and there's <laughs> your job right there, and then you go upstairs. No, he didn't want to be reminded of that. I'm with your dad. I'm a realtor, and I, I can't stand working from home. I got to go to really? the office. Yeah. I love it. I you don't. Do that. I don't. I've been I'm in Simply just, Vegas yeah. over two years, I gotta, and you've I seen me in that office maybe twice. It. I got to separate my, you know. I, <laughs> no, I, 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 that's yeah. all I prefer. Let's bring this part of it up. All right, so we know that going into 2022, home affordability is going to still be a problem. We talk about mm-hmm. this a lot. Now, mm-hmm. is it going to be a point where – it's going to really start to show its ugly head here in Vegas because I think that uh, it's already there for the most part. But that's one of the, the reasons why a lot of people are going to be refraining from buying in 2022 is they're on the fence. I get it all the time. <clears throat> hey, what's my payment at, you know, 500000 You're looking at a price point of a home, 420 starting price point. Mm-hmm. Um, if it gets to 500, that's I don't think there will be any. Payment. I don't think there'll be any clear indication of what's going to happen and what's what until we kind of until we free up supply. As long as we have such a limited supply, nothing really matters. But that's kind of because what we're there's doing, the, right? there's 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 I mean, that's just what needs to I free mean, things up. Things to, have been pretty low true since numbers. like November. But there's there's no home, there's still no homes the on the thing, market. Yeah, I mean, the, there's the, less than yeah. a month. The thing I mean, I think if we can get up to there. 6 months, that's when I think we can really start being able to tell what's real for statistics. Yeah. The thing I think is going to stop that, though, to get inventory is rates going up, which they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also, too, like if you got the Fed's fund rate go up, you're going to have now the average student loans. So all loans. that makes sense. And yes, it should normally be applied. But I'm saying with so few homes on the market, you can't apply normal things like that because rates can go up. You can do that. But when you have such a few supply on the market. So, so home, <laughs> home, home affordability. You still have a lot scarcity. Of, you still have more people which moving. We talk about. Yeah, you still have more people moving and less homes. Mm-hmm. Period. So you can have higher interest rates. You can whatever you want to do, but as long as you still have a lot more people moving here that come on the yeah. market for homes. Yeah, and that's true. But I think the point is we are we're building. I think this town right. is definitely building. And so. see, see, what I'm crazy. saying is, is that there's no drop off on demand. So it's just mm-hmm. really going to be. I, I feel that we're going to still be in the same market this year. And Mm -hmm. I mean, we talk about it a lot, but it's what do people see, right? What, what, what is the forecast in the short term? We, we, everybody's asked like, what's going to happen this year? Like, where are you going to be at? Where do you think rates are going to be? What are homes going to do? I I don't know, but I can tell you that in the short term, what we see is nothing but things going up and and an overinflated market. See, that's the thing. Everybody talks about homes are too much money and they just keep on going up yet. They keep on going up. But yet they keep it, buying. It doesn't, yeah. So people keep on buying and it still keeps on going up regardless of what so, everyone so does. So it doesn't really matter that, at that point, you still right? need that. That's what I'm saying is I don't think you can apply normal factors and normal things right you now. S- we're not going to know what's normal until a couple of years after we're removed from all this. But you still need the demand pool. And <laughs> right now that's coming from California. But so Yeah, we have a huge demand. I mean, we're always going to be below what California is, right? Sure. It, it can never get up to what California is. So because then what's the point of moving if like you're not getting any money from the move or whatever? Different governor? Anyways. Well, well, I, wanna, sure. I also want to bring up one other thing here. So with, with that coincides with real estate, we talk about what's happening on a week-to-week basis. We'll get a little bit more into your into uh, real estate with you, Brett. No, uh, mortgage rates are up 2.3% with new, ec- uh, new record average loan sizes, right? So we all know that if the prices of homes are going up, loan sizes so are going up. So what's the average interest rate right now? So we're year? looking anywhere about 3.4 to 3.6. And what was it at the historically low? Oh, it was mid twos. Okay, maybe maybe slightly less. So what's that, doing... what's that for a difference on twenty percent down on a five hundred thousand dollar home? What would be the difference I mean, in the on payment? a five hundred thousand dollar between home, the two and a half? And it three could and be half. anywhere from three to five hundred dollars potentially. Okay, and, right. And Dan, where, what about idea. jumbo loans? Aren't you getting more of those? Because I'm getting jumbo loan buyers. Right yeah, now. I'm getting jumbo mm-hmm. loans, and again, that's a different world, and yeah. that's more of a, a situational thing with banks. But yeah, they've so, increased their money. To put in that program, they though, have correct. having yes. the limit. So I that's mean, them saying well, we anticipate luxury homes. Yeah, the limit now, the county luxury limit prices, is six forty seven, yeah. mm-hmm. two hundred, right? And yep. so, so anything above that's jumbo. But going back mm-hmm. to it, mortgage applications increased two point three percent from the previous week, and it's really the strong purchase market, right? Refis, 
have really just stopped. Yeah, and we're down forty nine percent, right? D- yeah, dude, you, you if you're gonna do it, you you've done it. Right. That was last year. Yeah, the refi. Yeah. That was well, still two thousand twenty one. Let's talk about, about this though, and this is where I'm at. So <laughs> people, people, they also like millennials and people that had student loans. They use that money mm-hmm. to pay off a lot of their debt, including student <clears throat> loans, things like that. So what I'm also seeing is a lot of people are using the cash out refi to pay off a lot of their debt, like other yeah. things too. So the cash out refinance is the big thing. Huh. Now, people, well, it's because look. Well, I mean, I get it. I just they didn't leverage know that their money. It was like a huge thing, right? Yeah, now. they leverage their money and they go out and they, you know, they're saying, okay, maybe I want to buy another house. Maybe I want to uh, pay off that car. Sure. You know, or I ran up my credit cards because it was pay a it pandemic. Down, yeah. I got to get that stuff removed. You know, mm-hmm. I got a 29 percent interest rate on these credit cards. And I've gained, yeah. So I spent more on credit cards than I ever have, but my house value went up 20%. So <laughs> that but, makes but, up for that. But what's crazy is year over year, we've actually dropped uh, 37% on on applications, even though we're up really? recently. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. So it's, it's different right now. I mean, it's just, look, the demand is still there. It's just, mm. we don't see as many people coming in to mm-hmm. get it done. Uh, and as far as cash out refis, that's like the predominant thing that we're talking about. But, you know, are they just, is it buyer burnout? They just, you know, to drop um, off an application. I think it's. I think it's like this. So we all went through uh, the holidays. Mm-hmm. We see an increase in rates. It's like a perfect storm. Prices continue to rise. People getting mm-hmm. sick. <laughs> uh, people getting sick. Yeah. So, so I think it's. I think it's like almost like it's not a pause, but maybe just a trickle off. I a think a process. lot of people who were dead set on buying or needed to buy did. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. now you they have people it. who still want to buy and are interested in buying, but they're not. The I end just, of the world's not going to happen if they do it tomorrow. I just so they're just see, like uh, we're going to sit back more in a driving position and absorb for a bit. I just don't see the market going up in price that much this year. I, I think the problem is I think the Fed's going to have no choice here but to raise yeah. the interest rates. I mean, seven point whatever it was released inflation. That's insane. That should never oh, be sh- that high. Mm. Yeah. Now you I, don't really know how to digest that because it's not. That but might is that be the a real pin- number. I mean, I think it's higher. I think they just kind of fudged. Well, I'll be honest with you. I don't (laughs) listen. We went up, what, almost 30 percent last year. I don't want it to increase even close to that this year. Yeah. If you have multiple years where something is increasing 20, 30 percent, dude, that's not good. Well, a healthy (laughs) like eventually in the end, a healthy inflation rate is two to five, two to four percent a year. Yeah. But that hasn't been true since 08 because we're in deflation forever. Mm -hmm. So when we have a number like seven point whatever, which is a big problem the problem is well we had no inflation for 10 years then you have all the stimulus and all this crazy stuff yeah. so is that just the market correcting itself for lost time I know. or not yeah but the fed's looking at this and if that happens again they will jack up interest rates and and making the ability to buy a house even so let's even more difficult let's segue to a different topic because we got to keep this show going i want to talk with corinne corinne you got this uh business uh, me, ownership this, for women yeah, social yeah. media let's Holla, talk, corinne. Talk, talk to me My about what's going text. on girl <laughs> you know what i love uh networking with business women business owners no men allowed no, well yeah once <laughs> in a while kidding. we let y'all in so but boys you don't know, play nice we we are just you know some badass women i network yeah, with. network yeah. at network lv I mean, yeah. shout out to network lv shannon <laughs> has a, a a women's a group as well called mm-hmm. together her get it together these oh, are some, these oh are this some, is on the together. her, her. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, what yeah, it means like women don't mess around women business owners do not mess around we don't got time we don't got you guys got the hustle y'all. going on. I see. We do have on. the hustle, and and be dude, online, they're alphas just like we are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> more, but AK. probably okay, yeah. okay. Um, but yeah, doubt it. Absolutely, <laughs> your Green Bay Packers <laughs> so gonna suck today. Um, oh, okay. Well, you know what? It's just, and we're very social creatures. Women by nature, we're I think we're very social creatures. So we're have a really good presence. We utilize social media to the max yeah. and sometimes you know there's some fringes out there that it, it's we have to deal with a lot of crap online yeah. as well you earn what you stuff, you earn what you read so you guys, yeah. Uh, yeah. i mean the good stuff is yep. is there the good the, stuff, i get a lot I, I i get great business great opportunities all that, all that place, extra bs you deal with is just the, all the extra bs is just part of part and part parcel of, of business sometimes. cost of doing business it you is, guys, uh, <laughs> it is. <laughs> you guys hold any networking events or something absolutely like? you want to well, come we're, yeah, sometimes we'll we let the boys do. in so you know, I'll, joe I'll looked great in a pair of heels and a nice dress what'd you joe you know what i honestly don't when we when we do invite the men there's only a few 
you really should take advantage of it because it's, yeah. it's like I went to Catholic girls school. It's like when the boys are invited to the dances, it's like dang. I, I think it's intimidating <laughs> though. Like you go there and it's intimidating because a lot Why of is it intimidating. I'm gonna yeah. tell you. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you. So like you could bring up a topic, but then you got like. You know, fifty girls saying, mm, "I disagree." And then, what are you going to say at that point? Well, then you agree. Well, then, yeah. <laughs> so you use your past, you use your past judgment, and you just move on to the next thing, and you let it be because you're not going to win. You just say, "I was wrong." <laughs> I'm just, I'm just I was wrong. Start doing a Rick Reigns. I'm going to say, yep. "I concur." Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was wrong. Next question. It's surprising. I got along with everyone. Yeah, yeah, last, got just last so much network, more to teach him. Last ne networking event that one of the few men that showed up had the had the the, the courage to show up he was a plumber man all the women were like oh give me your card baby you know it's like, right? oh is it a hookup spot yeah. or is it no. an actual place because I, I are mean, you serious dude, no what, they, they're you, alphas you know how plumber yeah we need plumbers <laughs> they don't wait for well, guys listen. like they see something they want <laughs> plumbers they, handymen oh what was the end with the one they want uh, their pipes uh, clean <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> wow, I walked right into that one I walked right into that one Rick comes through it for us all <laughs> So, no. Rick no. Miller's the hammer of they all of us. They, they don't want nothing seriously. cleaned, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. And is it, uh, well, women, women business owners for all types of businesses? or All it, types of businesses. So. All types of businesses. So, like so I said. So, this, this is kind of like a sorority, right? Almost like, or like, what do they call those those meetings? What is Sisterhood. 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 Isn't there like a. a sorority. Is there like other, yeah, they're yeah. doing jello shots and. <laughs> Alpha <laughs> Omega Kyers, whatever, it's just, dude. It's just, you know what? We, we just like you guys have boy talk. We need our girl time. Yeah. Okay, uh, we need our girl time. I thought it was. I thought it, you wanted to invite more guys. Well, once in a while, we'll let you guys in. I'll okay. let you know. Yeah. You just gotta right, know let the, me know. You gotta know you the need password to let us know. Well, yeah, yeah. You, I'll you definitely go. Password. Guys just talk about themselves all the time. So. <laughs> right. Actually, get some real information. You are gonna get an invite from me next time. And the password at the door is women power, right? Right. Women power. <laughs> and the That's password to like leave is don't forget that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to me about what what's going on with that whole business thing. I know you guys get an, an, a, a networking meeting. We do, we do. What about well, like, Shannon's got one coming up on Thursday, so um, I, it's it's really it's really what you, fun. What do you guys teach there? What do you what do you do there? Like, I mean, is there something that you guys go over? I well, mean, Network LV actually, um, Arsene, Vicky, I'm doing a shout out to you guys. She they're doing a workshop on Instagram social media mm. gain fo how to what content creating content mm -hmm. promoting it getting followers how to get followers. so let's let's rank the social media platforms okay yeah. and we'll do it in order so as far as popularity right instagram now. so you got tiktok facebook. tiktok instagram really? facebook i'm not on you have linkedin twitter right, and twitter mm -hmm. right let's do those five yeah yeah all right so where do you think those rank from one to five like meaning one is you have better one on facebook? let her answer one out of five Facebook number one, over a billion users on Facebook. You know, so well, where do you get more networking business from? Th for me, it's Facebook. Is it because my mm. demographic? You know, yeah. my children, my twin, my millennial daughters, they left Facebook years ago because it's like all you old people. Yeah, are I know. On that's what I'm saying. Instagram, so they went to yeah. Instagram. All right. Yeah. So they went on Instagram. Now I know it's, it's funny. Like, Gen Z's like yeah. Instagram. You're old people. Right. We need TikTok. Exactly. Yeah. They're going. Your mom's on Instagram. Oh my god. So I'm yeah. Like, I'm on Instagram, <laughs> exactly. little girl. So, but but rank Instagram. it. I mean, I know you like Facebook. Facebook. I love Facebook. Facebook. Hold on. Let's let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it slowly, okay. one okay. at a time. Okay. Facebook. Definitely Instagram. So now. Facebook is what number one. Number one. Instagram, Instagram. number two. Okay. Because you know, so-called influencers are on there. Love that. Um, like Shannon's one of she's she's amazing on Instagram. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, LinkedIn. I network with Link LinkedIn for me is like hooking up with other. No, okay. Dude, I've, got, I've got zero in. business on LinkedIn. No, but yeah, me too. Me too. But it's uh, it, it is more professional. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, but other it doesn't ones. get creepy like Facebook or sometimes Instagram. Yeah, that's that's true. That's a good point. So LinkedIn is is a good way for me for me to link in with uh, other real estate agents from across the country. Mm -hmm. I got gotcha. you. Because that's where they go. Makes sense. That's yeah. where they go. You know, and we. We link up with other realtors to get referrals, business. So you from don't each do other. TikTok whatsoever. No, no. I'm, My, I'm shocked about that. Why the, not? Well, TikTok like a is TikTok the, kind of girl. Yeah, you like. I don't know what that means. I mean, but that you didn't the, say it the way you said. Oh, did you? As he rolls his eyes. <laughs> well, listen. We all know that TikTok. No, I'm 
is kind TikTok's of a crazy, younger dude. generation. Would you it's say? Very, would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and also yeah. too, a lot of it's the dancing. You get on there and they're yeah. just dancing. Uh, yeah. I don't get, on, but but it's still you're, it's a good exposure, right, for the newer younger generation. You should right? see me get platform. my groove on on TikTok. Yeah, if it's I'm a free kidding. platform, <laughs> use it. You know, I have a social media marketing background. If it's a free platform, it's it's great. But right <laughs> now, my demographic, my target market, is not on TikTok. Yeah. So well, that's what about Pinterest? On TikTok. Again, no. Pinterest, Pinterest no. is tanking, me, and I think it's going up. Yeah. No, actually, I just out. had a social media shebang thing this this week oh, for, for uh, Simply Vegas, and actually, Pinterest is making a huge comeback. Okay. Especially with I, like going and putting designs in homes, because a lot of mm. women love to go on there, and then they're associating the real, and, and the wife will be like, hey, honey, let's go look at this house this weekend, and... That's true. Well, well now we own a house, and that just happens a lot of times, so a lot of it now, I guess Pinterest... Uh, uh, supposedly yeah, is making a, a big comeback with so I don't know if they with I, had, I had stock in Pinterest I sold in the summer because yeah. they seem to have this no idea. I agree man I've this never idea. been in a Pinterest kind of guy to begin with they, they kind of have this <laughs> idea of not allowing you to use it as like a uh, yeah. a platform for no I know you have to log in I look at yeah. Pinterest I use it for dresses if I need to buy mm. something for huh. an event or something I'll do I'll see go I've go never out. been in I'll go to yeah, it's, it's not. It's, it's we got to keep not, moving on this show, but I want to say this. So, is there anything else or any uh, something specific you want to bring up about that or about what you're doing? If someone wanted to get going on social media and really get going as a woman and promote their business, what would be the first thing or few things you would suggest them do? Go in Las Vegas. Go to Network LV. Okay, it's Network underscore LV. There, I think that's their Instagram as well. Because it's all about helping each other. It and is. And that's a great way to get your stuff out there and have other people do it that is. for you. It is. Strong women help other women. We yeah. don't, we're not. Okay. We're, what you know, was that again? What was that website? Ne- well, it, the the handle on uh, on Instagram is network underscore okay. LV. And I think it's also, on, that's also on their Facebook page. Okay. Or, let me know and I'll, I'll, cool. I'll, I'll give it to you guys. Corinne. We'll have it to you guys. And you know, on that note, and uh, I, don't, I don't know if you have a different opinion, but I started my, I started my own firm uh, two years ago and it's by and far the best client referrals always networking like mm-hmm. people that know somebody and i find that because we get like networking you go to an event it's best in my opinion not just to go to random events but to pick one or two mm-hmm. yes. that happen consistently and just go yeah. yeah and don't worry about trying to blow people out of the water or sell yourself the yeah. first day just just meet people fun. just meet people start, start, start off by not <laughs> saying about yourself start off asking hey hey look when yeah. my what, children what, what were, were what do you young, do what do you do tell me about you when my children were young i was in that. mom's exactly. clubs and we were refer people to each other all yeah. the time all the time. let's head way over to uh rick rains here okay we're gonna talk rick. about property management <laughs> rick's gonna give us some insight about what's happening with property management and i don't know talk to us what's the details rick hey well, uh, I'm not going to give you really uh, any statistics today, but I, I wanted to piggyback off of one of our last um, guests that we had on with no demo mold. And we've got a situation in our office, and I, I found it very interesting. The tenant who um, is on the verge of being forced out on a 30-day, the owner wants to take the property back, is ha- put up the, uh, the, the mold... Um, brought up mold in order to be able to stay. Uh-huh. So she went and, and did a test on her own. And of course <laughs> it came back positive. Wow, and what were the odds? What are the odds? <laughs> so um, we got a hold of No Demo Mold and they went in and did a full survey with pictures and tests and all of this and gave us pictures, showed us pictures of some mold, again on the caulking in the bathroom and some of the caulking around the water uh, around the uh, water heater. And so you could see that there was mold there, okay? But when you actually did a test, a real test, one of the things that the tenant didn't do was, and I guess this is very critical, is compare the inside statistics or whatever the test is to the outside. And that was something that she did not do. <clears throat> and the test came back completely negative because there wasn't enough actual real uh problematic mold in order because to there's you know, always mold spores in there's the always air. mold everywhere everywhere so anyway the point being to this whole thing is is that if you're an investor and you've got a property manager have them do the mold test in order that whatever it is that you're trying to do you just keep staying on track i learned a lot from that guest Thank yeah you. he was excellent he was great the other thing that has happened recently and i got a call on this just <clears throat> a couple days ago 
Uh, the Clark County Treasurer is putting out uh, notifications of people who are in uh, problematic situations with paying their taxes and that their properties are going up for potentially for sale. And so uh, we got a call from a lady who was looking for uh, advice. We told them, no, we can't give you advice. We're not an attorney. Uh, but from our uh, experience, okay, she, her situation was, well, these people were going are going to have their property taken. It was on the tax ledger, so we went and we paid their we paid the taxes off. So don't mm -hmm. we own the property? And uh, our response was, did you buy it at a tax sale? No. <laughs> well, you just went and paid their taxes for them, right? Because the you just went and paid their taxes the, for them. The him. owner showed up. The owner showed up, and he's like, Thanks. "You know what? Where's this is my property? What are you doing?" And they said, "Well, we paid the taxes." It's oh like, my Wait, why did they pay the taxes? Wow. Because they thought that if they went and paid the taxes, that they got the property. They didn't buy it at a tax sale. And in, I haven't heard that one before. That's, uh, that's what I'm saying. Dude, I've, 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 had in, I've had people call me and ask me about that specific situation before. I'm, I would, just, I couldn't believe it. And, a, and of I'm course, like, yeah, every, you think every, you should pay someone's state, taxes? You, you get here, their house? Here's the other thing. Well, you and, do if they go to the sale. That's the it, point. That, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, if it goes to the sale. Well, here's, just, I mean, wait, wait a second. It's got to be a process, this, bro. The, this is yeah. for the investors out there. So even if you buy a property through the treasurer, at a county it's tax funny. sale, almost every jurisdiction in this in the country has a redemption period. Yep, yep, yep. Whether it's six months, a year, two years, whatever it is, they can still come back. They, the previous owner, pay the taxes back, and usually there's a a, a penalty involved where you may get a, a certain percentage interest on the money mm -hmm. that you had paid, which is very minimal. Yeah. But there's always this redemption period. So even even if they purchase it at a tax sale, you still have to wait the through, the, through the redemption period before you're actually in the free and clear. The only time I've seen it, uh, I'm sure it's other situations, but the only time I've seen it free and clear is when the taxes happen because somebody died and the estate wasn't set up and somehow yeah. that asset got lost so no one went and redeemed but that's the only time right. i've ever seen a tax that sounds but yeah. i've seen it a three hundred thousand dollar sales house <clears throat> after the redemption period expired they paid 1100 for the tax lien so we're gonna yeah. talk about wow. return. we're gonna talk about return now, now it's at like 500 so uh mm. no it, that that happens that's across the country that's all a deal. the time that's not <laughs> unusual but it's rare to actually yeah. everything kind of line up fall in place but if you try it a bunch of times it might it might it might it's like getting full payment full payment paid off for a loan mod yeah it's yeah it can happen but you're that lottery ticket yeah exactly so um, those were the two investment uh, uh, pieces that I wanted to bring up today as far as uh, being in property <clears throat> management because they wanted then to have us rent the place out and so on and so forth it's like eh, sorry can't do that yeah <clears throat> so so you you primarily get people that are uh you're you're seeking landlords right you got tenants but you're seeking landlords because that's really where your bread and butter's at of course and if somebody's mm -hmm. out there uh working or looking for somebody that's good and professional and somebody that's representable or represents them give us a call good yeah Atlas so Group. so one last thing is on the rents right mm -hmm. we haven't seen an increase in rents although we've seen increase in average rents year over year last year was one of the highest we've ever seen you think that pace is going to slow down this year I think the pace is going to uh, slow down, but I, it's going to continue. It's going to continue just like uh, Brett and I and everybody, most everybody here thinks that the appreciation of houses are going to increase 5% or whatever mm -hmm. over the next year. <clears throat> Rents are going to continue to do the same thing. So as the, as the uh, housing prices go, so do the rent prices. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move over to Brett. Brett's going to talk about real so estate uh, and cryptocurrency. Pretty much talked about real estate already. So I just yeah. want to say something quick about NFTs. Um, you know, so NFTs can be used in a multitude of different ways and copyrights, further earnings, all that different so stuff. Explain real what estate. It, explain what an NFT is because the average person might not even, we don't even. Sure. Non-fungible token. Okay. We're talking what about that, what cryptocurrency. That, yeah, yeah. So what that means is it's one of a kind item, right? So Bitcoin is not an NFT because you can exchange one Bitcoin for another Bitcoin, Right. But an yeah. NFT is like you own the exclusive copyrights to that or or it's one of a kind period, whatever that item is. 
But so, one of the things. So, Brett, am I also correct in saying NFTs are not cryptocurrency? Is that correct or incorrect? Correct. They're not, yeah, cryptocurrencies. They're not cryptocurrency. I mean, but it's. I linked. mean, you use it's Ethereum. Linked. Yeah, you use Ethereum or some other blockchain to record Purchase it and it. store it on to show that you own it. So, in that sense, but you're not like you know, trading it or anything that you're not buying it for the future for Ethereum to go up in price or down in price. You're doing it to facilitate and store. Well, I got a question NFT. on something. So um, I look at, you look at like, I know it sounds kind of old school, but gold, mm -hmm. silver, sure. tangible scarcity, <clears throat> right? We mm -hmm. always talk about homes, yeah. scarcity. If you see all these cryptocurrency uh, currencies being created, NFTs being created, where's the, where does the value come in where, it's like oversaturated where the, that'll so, diminish that value. He, here's where these cryptocurrencies are. They're, most of them are essentially tokens. And a token is created to be, to be able to facilitate the movement of whatever your product is. For, for instance, like Ethereum, you have a smart contract and a smart contract is basically putting a computer program down, a series of executed things you want to happen, right? And you're putting that in a program. In order for that to facilitate on the blockchain and in order for the movement of that transaction to happen, it has to have its own token. Right. And that's what you see on these crypto exchanges is they're not really, you know, like Bitcoin is a store of value, but most of these, and Ethereum is primarily to do smart contracts and NFTs. But most of these others are not actual cryptocurrencies in that sense, they're a token. And that token was created and invented to facilitate a certain business or a, a product trying to do something that requires action of it. So like, say you come up like Proppy is an online kind of tech real estate company, right? So in order for you to facilitate putting things on the blockchain, say you take a real estate transaction and you wanna put it on the blockchain, in order for that to facilitate, you need a token. Yeah. So they created their own token as a utility to make that happen. Those are what people are trading. Right. So, th you know, that's kind of different. But the point of what I wanted to say about NFTs is we can get in more of different uses, but one use case that I read about this weekend um, that I find intriguing is, you know who Gary V is? Gary Vanderchuk? Mm -mm. No. He, he's, yeah. Okay, he's Gary V. He's a super oh, huge. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know who he is. This guy started buying Bitcoin when it was like $2.00. And he's just, he's one of these guys, he's a billionaire. He's always, he's like a Mark Cuban. He's always ahead of the trend. And he started his own, his own NFT with the theory of, I don't really know what this is and the potential of it yet, but so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create my own thing called V Friends, which is like an NFT. And when you buy this NFT, what you're doing is you're buying membership mm -hmm. into his speaking engagements you're, it's an invitation to this course and that course or whatever it is. And his whole theory is, I'm going to create something that will at least give people something of value to do until we find out what our NFT is about. Until we find out what we can really do with this NFT, we've gotta be able to provide some sort of value. So we're gonna include membership on this, courses on that, you know, attendance and this and so forth. And that's included when you buy the NFT, you're basically buying a membership into these things. And he's saying this NFT is going to be a lot more than what it is right now. It's just this world is so new. We're going to explore it. But to get your money into me now, we got to give you some sort of value. So we're going to do this in the meantime, give you a value in a membership and figure out what the NFT is really for later. And that's how they're approaching it. Yeah, and one of the I mean, I don't know much about the technological side, mm -hmm. but I know that the NFTs, and I think it's true, as far as creating a, a more solid title to something, intellectual property, you could mm -hmm. use this black, blockchain technology to do that. Um, I will say, though, I think it's a better way, basically like a trademark, right? Mm -hmm. To do a trademark, you can go on federal And that's it. the thing. It's, it's, it's a way to secure your legal rights to right. something without having to go through like, okay, you and I have a contract, but all of a sudden you want to be an asshole and you're like, I'm not going to do this on the contract. I'm just not going to honor it. Well, now for me to get you to honor your contract, I got to hire an attorney, then attorneys yeah. get involved in this. It, it, it like, here, it doesn't matter. Here's it the thing unlocks. though. I don't know why that gets rid of the attorney. That's what I that, thought that's too. What, how does that get rid of this. the attorney though? Because, because it's basically a computer program that's written in like, for example, 
when you create an NFT, you can create it so that you get future royalties on it. So every time that NFT exchanges hands in the future, but in order if, in order for that NFT to legally exchange hands to to go from the blockchain so, and get but recorded, what if somebody just you have to takes a copy of the picture and then just uses it not in the NFT world but uses it in the other online. Okay, so you take a picture of my house. Can you go and sell my house then? Where you get the money for selling my house then? Because you took a picture of it. Well, but legally the, the deed is in my name. Yeah, but you'd have to sue me to get me to stop doing that. On a blockchain, you don't have to. So here's because it's automatically written in there. Here, here's one of it the skips things. You. Yeah. So but here's one, one of the things that Brett's bringing up, but is uh, somewhat cloudy about it. So what he's talking about is this program is written into the NFT. It's just computer. And basically, code. what it says is you're going to do this, I'm going to do this, you're going to do this, and I'm going to do right, this. Right, I understand that. And if it doesn't happen. This is what happens. Well, listen, though. I want yeah. so, so you and I have an agreement. So, so what's written on the agreement that we have on the physical agreement, we put that into terms onto a computer program. So then if you decide on your end to play dirty or not honor the contract. There's a result. The result boom. is that it automatically in, does this, this, and this. In the NFT world. But what yes. I'm saying is, let's, right. say, let's say I'm not in the NFT world. Correct. I go there, find that image, notice that it has value because a lot of people recognize the image, copy, it's, paste it, it. It's not going to be given value. Go to my website and try to use use it to promote my because website. Because it won't be on the blockchain. It won't be on the blockchain. Well, well, why say, can't I just say, use a, a snipping say, You I can. Say something. So I, I can go and put other people's music on my YouTube channel, but I want to that say doesn't something mean I have this. the copyrights so, to exactly, it. Exactly. That's, that's where the attorney comes into play. Dan, do you want to say something? I would like but to say it's, something. It's written <laughs> so you don't need to. <laughs> Can I so, please say something? <laughs> yes, go. Please do. <laughs> hey, Dan, 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 hurry up. Like, say like usual, Brett I try Dan. to answer something and everyone throws in a million <laughs> well, questions. Brett just glared at me, Brett, by the way. Brett, like, you're, bringing <laughs> up, you're bringing up something that people are unfamiliar with, right? So you got to let them you know, answer that question and then counter it, right? So all I'm saying is I get your side of it. Sure. And I understand what you're saying. Now, I also see what he's saying. If you have a structure or a system that is, hey, you know what? It's not black and white. Like if you go to court, it's outside the NFT system. But this is black hold and on, white. Hold on. In a what sense of it not being like that, let's say that somebody doesn't have the NFT world. Well, somebody has to enforce it, right? And you, and let's say that something outside of that NFT comes up that now is brought to say like evidence or something that comes up. Now you may need attorney representation to say, Hey, you know what? Yeah, you have this. All the more reason to put in an NFT at the beginning. There's no, no ambiguity. There's no, there's no arguing. It's, it's, there's always going to be that because it's never going to be. Everything is just you agreed to it. When you create the NFT, when you sign the NFT, you Hold agreed on. to it. This is a specific question I got, right? I go on, find the image. Mm -hmm. I just simply copy it from my computer. I guess what context are you using this in? Okay. That's that's going to matter. Let's say, I don't know. Let's, let's, you know, Coca-Cola is a big trademark, right? Sure. Okay. Let's say something exists on the NFT world mm -hmm. that has big recognizability. Mm -hmm. I go on there, copy that image, throw it on my website. Okay. How do you get it off my website? Don't. Don't. It doesn't. Right. It, it, so then how is it like, how are you saying it's automatic is my point. That I, I've, just, I've just done something you're, illegal. You're, you're describing two different Two different well, things. that's what I'm trying to understand. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not claiming that. Yeah, I'm you're. Yeah, I don't know how to answer this question sometimes because you're talking about yeah, something. Yeah, but it comes down to this. Look, we you talked know? about this before. You have a, a, a title company, mm -hmm. and you could do a blockchain, and you can say let's eliminate the title company altogether, right? Or the the representation. Well, you're still going to need some. I, let me yeah. let me ask the question. Okay, so we're going through the process, and you know this. Mm -hmm. And let's say that you said, you know what? There's an adjustment. Now there's a lien, or now there's. Uh, the wrong person on title, or we need to add somebody to title. Mm -hmm. You can say, well, I'm going to go and put the block, you know, add that to the blockchain. But is the blockchain smart enough to actually make adjustments through the process? You know what I mean? Like, No, it'd have to be added to the blockchain. Right. So this. you would still need some type of support <clears throat> from some, you know, representation of title or something to well, make sure that I the, mean, making sure that the blockchain You could set up AI and have that go through and do yeah. all the searching. I mean, technically, if you wanted to, but in the purpose of this, yeah, you would still need somebody to physically do the searches and if anything's come up, um, but you can have an Oracle put on your computer through Link. And what that does is basically it takes real life data and it automatically converts it to blockchain. So the best way to put that is, a mat, remember back when CDs became popular? And it's Not a, like this. Yeah, so it's it, it's uh, I I know I'm dating myself, but it's the same it's the same version of of taking the music that was everyone says, hey, I want the music from my cassette tape and I want it transferred onto my CD. Same thing. 
It's taken real life data and it's put it on the blockchain through an Oracle. So that's how you would do it. So as things got discovered and a new lien came on the property or whatever it is, it simply goes into the Oracle and gets added onto well, the blockchain. I want to I end it that's with That's how this it happens. Because I think you brought up a lot of good points, but you know, investors look at cryptocurrency as a risky asset, right? They do. They, and I'm not saying like people that buy and hold. I'm saying- Depending. Yeah, depending. Now you see where this, we've had huge gains, huge losses, huge gains. It's all about what's going on in the market. Same with stocks. Now, mm -hmm. I feel that it's kind of a getting a little bit oversaturated in the sense that it seems like everybody's creating their own cryptocurrency or there's constant sure. new cryptocurrencies coming on the market. So I think it is the value well, diminishing, say, for the, for I the mean, main listen, ones like so, Ethereum. So people want to look to what they want to look, right? So the market's gone down 25% in the past two or three days. And everyone says, well, look, it, it could be oversaturated. Did you know that this past week in the stock market is the worst month in January yeah. that we've had since, shows since, me, o, since October 1987. Shows we've had the worst month since October 1987 the in crypto, stocks. Yeah, everyone's up here hammering on, on cryptocurrency being down. But that shows me that crypto and stock... Are, they do right they now. Move, they're related they very move, much so. Which means... That they never used to, and they have been this last which year. Which means that investors yep. are in both. And yeah. that's my whole thing, which is cryptocurrency. Take it all and throw it out the window, man. It's only 10 years old. It went from zero to $2 trillion market. <clears throat> well, like, who, who knows what's going to happen, man? <laughs> We got to end the show. So, unfortunately, no, yes. No, no, I want to get on my soapbox some more. We got Tuesday. We got future days. So, if you guys want to tune in, we're actually going to have a Ooh, very like nice woman guest. Women power. First time homeowner. She is. She's a yeah, first time coming homeowner. Cool. She's a Tuesday. millennial. Yeah. Awesome. So, and she, oh. yep, yep. She's also your daughter. She's, She's in she trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I want to go around the room. I want to tell everybody, you know, if you guys go ahead and pitch yourself, tell somebody why somebody would use you, and then and, and also <laughs> pitch your information. Oh, uh, this is, uh, my name is Rick Rains. I'm with the Atlas Group, and you can get us at www.property-mgmt.com. We would love to talk to you, especially if you're an investor, owner, need property management. <clears throat> We're on all social media, 702-916-2200. All right, Brett Jenny. BrettJenny.com, why you should use me, because I'm like Tina Turney. Tina Turner, simply the best. <laughs> Tina Turner. <laughs> All right. What about you, Corinne? All right. Well, I'm plugging in again my network LV women, women business owners. I just want to say when I said that thing about, see, I love y'all. I love you guys. But if I had said in a, bu a room full of women, I met a plumber, they would get it. I did not see huh. any kind of recognition. Well, my brother. They would get it. What? They would get it. They my would brother get owns a plumbing business. Okay. I got the <laughs> clean your pipes jokes. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> take it. But if you were a bunch of women, we would get it because badass women know how to delegate. Solo homeowners, yeah. women know how to delegate this kind of job. Or if they're with significant others, like, please don't touch the bathroom again. Please. I need, I have a plumber that we can, because, you know, they get it. Women, I'm talking to the women business owners. Mm. Anyway, that's it. All right. KoreanLuhan.com. And I also want to talk with here, Mr. Joe Dragon. Joe, so we didn't, we wanted to get a little bit more into uh, real estate law, but can you kind of tell us what you do and how somebody would get in contact with you. And if there's any real, con you know, small story about anything that goes on that you can maybe help somebody with. Yeah, I'll shoot with a quick story. So uh, part of what I do, you can reach me at dragonlawgroup.com. My email is jdragon at dragonlawgroup.com. Just how it sounds. Um, I Really quick story. I had a client um, pay all their mortgages. They ran into a dispute with their HOA because the HOA was trying to like, overcharge them which they were and they didn't realize what was going on and the HOA put a lien they didn't realize it and sold the house and now they're frankly up shit's creek um, and wow. it's very unfortunate because and now I'm going to get them out but they have to pay me on the back end which I, you know is terrible for them so I handle things that happen behind the scenes yeah. when Deals, buy a house, everything goes smooth, and things go wrong. Shouldn't the escrow company have caught that? Joe, Joe, I can get them out, but it's going to cost you. Uh. <laughs> well, it's unfortunate because she had no reason to know what was going on, right? But I'm, my point is, if you got any sort of thing that has to do with your house, uh, any sort of lien at all, any way payment that's tied to your house, and you don't know what's going on, and you're confused, I recommend giving me a call. You know, the, the cost for just a little opinion like that is going to be... Uh, 500 to 1,000. Maybe it's free if it's very simple, frankly. But when something happens, mm -hmm. now you got courts. Yeah. Now you got our attorneys. Now you're talking about a lot, a lot of money. time. Yeah. So, and some people don't think about it. Any questions at all, feel free to give me a call if you're doing a transaction like that. All right, guys. I'm Dan French, your host. If you guys have any questions, comments, comments in the comment section, please put them in. <laughs> uh, also, like the channel. Subscribe to the channel. We're trying to grow the channel. 
I mean, obviously we're here to give you that content, but we also want to have some raving fans that, you know, support us through the process. And uh, we appreciate all you guys out there. Uh, you're the reason why this show exists. And uh, until we see you Tuesday, it'll be Tuesday at six o'clock. We're out. And uh, that's it. Thank you for watching the French Workbench podcast. You can find us here every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. to find out all the information on real estate and financing here in Las Vegas. Also, check us out on our LV Home Professionals website. You can find your future home there. A lot of good information. And you can find us on audio-only options through SoundCloud and iTunes.